Buddy, calm down, calm down, Buddy. Buddy, just calm down, I beg. Calm down, calm down, I beg, I beg. I beg, I beg, just calm down. I beg, I beg. I beg, I beg. Jesus Christ. Buddy, just calm down, I beg, I beg. Leave him, leave him, leave him. I don't have to pass to you, Hey! Yes, my people in the bar, you now welcome to this channel. We will give our bunga. Hope this one of the small what what we they give there where they, they cry like baby. I'm breaking a layer waiting Prime Minister talk. Thank you so much, um, cabinet members, honorable members, and of course the uh, the Amer North American, South American rep, uh, pharmacist Diana. Thank you very much for coordinating this particular town hall all the time. I welcome every one of you this evening, and it has always been very wonderful to be with you, especially Biafrans in the United States. My fellow Biafran, we have seen the paradigm shift in the course of this event of the liberation of Biafra people. As we continue to see the upsurge, in the Usman Danfodio conquest, the expansionists are at it again, doing everything to infiltrate our land with repentant Boko Haram. This move will be resisted by the Biafra people and its forces. We have seen on social media several people who have condemned one way or the other the liberation and the manner and the way we are fighting for our freedom. Today, many of them are on social media shouting, oh, everybody should come and see what is happening in Imo State. Everybody should come and see they are bringing Boko Haram. And I want to let them know today that there is no hope in those they are shouting and try to call their attention the only hope they have remain the biafra government remain the government they have castigated the only hope they have today to resist the importation of terrorists by hopu zodema and his gangs remain the biafra liberation army the only hope they have remain the biafra de facto government in the homeland and the biafra republic government in exile without us they are doomed. Without us, they are gone. And of course, we are not fighting for these few people. We have already secured 50 million vote, 50 good million. The Afro people has given us their mandate when they have lost hope on Nigeria. And they say, the Biafra government led by myself Honorable Simon Epa, go and fight for us and make sure that our land is safe, secure for our children and women. And that's exactly what the Biafra government is doing today. I have watched many of them shouting on top of their voice, trying to create awareness, and of course, nobody will listen to them. We remain the only hope that you have. You know this at this point, and if you don't know, you are going to know later. To this end, my fellow Biafrans in the United States, a lot of these same people who are now looking up to the government of Biafra to come and save them from the hand of the Nigerian terrorist state. I would like to educate Biafrans who are yet to understand the approach we are using, the defense and defensive approach, which a lot of people understand as violent agitation. I want to educate you today on some of the historic or some of the history of freedom fighting, and I will encourage all of you to listen and ponder on the speech that I'm making today. The struggle for independence and freedom often evokes a spectrum of tactics. 
ranging from peaceful protests to more violent form of agitation, depending on the pattern the oppressors choose. Why the peaceful movement can inspire significant changes? History has shown that in certain contexts, violent agitation has sometimes proven to be more effective in achieving independence, especially when the oppressors are leading the violence. Like we have today, Nigeria leading the violence against the Afro people. Why the oppressed are defending themselves ruthlessly, just like we, the Biafra people, have chosen to defend ourselves ruthlessly against the Nigeria war crime, against the crime against humanity that Nigeria has been perpetrating against Biafra people for decades. As this has become the choice of Nigeria terrorist state, and Biafrans are defending themselves. This I want to explain the dynamics between these two approach. And I want to give some historic example that could illustrate the complicities involved. My fellow Biafrans in the United States and those privileged to listen to this particular speech today, I want you to understand that Biafrans can never be killed again by Nigeria in the manner and in the way they have done in the past. Whenever the oppressors resort to violence, like Nigeria have resorted to violence from 1945 to date, I want you to understand and I want us to know the efficiency of violence agitation from historic perspective. How many people who faced even lesser than what we are facing today have defended themselves and used violence to get their freedom. Today, I am here in town hall with the Biafrans in the United States. For that reason, I will start from the history of the United States. The efficiency of violent agitation. The American Revolution of 1775 to 1783. The American colonies sought independence from British rule through a series of escalating conflict. Initially, protests like the Boston Tea Party demonstrated the resistance to the British policy. The same British we are trying, even though they claim we have independence under Nigeria, which is never a reality. However, as tensions escalated, armed conflict became inevitable in America. The Revolutionary War ultimately culminated in independence, illustrating how violent struggle can serve as a catalyst for self-determination. The willingness to engage in welfare governized support and unified separate colonial factions leading to the successful establishment of a new nation that all of you are today, and I am having a town hall meeting with you in the United States. Let us look into the haters. The Hater Revolution 1791 to 1804. The Hater Revolution is a stark example of how violent resistance can lead to independence. Enslaved Africans, Saint Dominic rose up against their French colonial masters in a brutal and protected conflict, while other colonies were pursuing gradual reform, Haiti revolutionary leaders sought a Toussaint 
emphasized armed rebellion as the means to achieve freedom. My fellow Biafrans, the successful revolt not only resulted in Haiti becoming in Haiti becoming the first independent Black Republic, but also served as an inspiration for other liberation movement across the globe. My fellow Biafrans, I want to take you also to Algeria. The Algeria War of Independence from 1954 to 1962. In Algeria, the struggle for independence from French colonial rule was marked by extreme violence. The National Liberation Front employed guerrilla warfare and terrorist tactics against French, against French forces. Despite the significant international condemnation and the harsh reprisal, the, NF, the NLF violent campaign was instrumental in rallying nationalist sentiment and eventually led to Algeria gaining independence in 1962. The intensity of the conflict highlighted the frustration of colonized people and ultimately prompted a re-evaluation of the colonial policies by the French government. When the oppressors resort to violence, they will also be confronted with more violence to have a more proactive and more decisive outcome. The Irish War of Independence from 1919 to 1921 Following centuries of British rule, the same British, the Irish struggle for independence saw both peaceful and violent tactics, while figures like Daniel O'Connell advocated for no means or no violence means the Irish Republican Army employed armed rebellion as a primary strategy. The conflict escalated with ambushes and retaliatory violence, ultimately leading to the Anglo-Irish Treaty and the establishment of the free of the Irish Free State in 1922. The combination of violent and political pressure was crucial in achieving a concession from the British government. At this juncture, Ask those idiots who call themselves Biafra agitators why are they interfering in the self defense that they could not provide for Biafra people for decades? They are carrying flag all over the world. My fellow Biafrans in the United States, why these few examples I just gave to you today illustrate the effectiveness of violent agitation? It is also very essential to consider the context in which these struggles occurred. Factors such as colonial oppression, today we have what I call the Fulani apartheid regime in Nigeria, where the expansionists continue to follow the legacy of the Usman Danfodio, and I have promised them I have come here to end the legacy of Usman Danfodio and the end of the legacy of this man Danfodio will start from the December 2nd. These factors, such as colonial oppression, social injustice, and lack of responsive governance, often participated the turn to violence. In many cases, peaceful protests had been met with repression, leaving group with few alternatives. Particular one, Biafra has witnessed for decades. Today, Biafra government, we are doing the talking. We are not only talking about doing it. The relationship between violent agitation and independent is complex sometimes and multi faced. And that's exactly why we adopted what, what I call the multi dimensional approach. 
Anywhere you come, we are there. If you come with peace, we give peace to you. If you come with violence, we give violence to you. If you come with diplomacy, we give diplomacy to you. If you come with political political approach, we give political approach to you. If you say it is a political solution, we give political solution to you. Why peaceful protests have historically played a significant role in social movement? Biafra has moved on from peaceful to a defensive with arms. Instances of violent resistance have sometimes proven more effective in achieving tangible outcomes. The example of the American Revolution, Haitian Revolution, Algerian War of Independence, and the Irish War of Independence, which and very soon Biafra will join among the history that has been made using a very strong armed resistance against a terrorist state like Nigeria. I want you to understand that peaceful efforts are stifled when a terrorist is in charge of government or when the authorial motive of the government is against the will of the people. Then the peaceful effort will always be stifled. The drive for freedom can lead group to resort to armed struggle. Ours will never ever be different. Ultimately, the choice of tactics is shaped by the myriad factors and each movement must navigate its own path towards self-determination. Today, as the government of Biafra, I am telling you, Biafra people, that we as a government, we are navigating our path toward our freedom and self-determination. Those Nigeria injured distractors should understand that our arms are getting stronger every day and we are getting more sophisticated. We will never drop this arm until the flag of Biafra is hoisted without any body interfering and until the recognition of Biafra as an independent state, the arms will continue to get more sophisticated. Thank you very much. Your support is needed as always and get ready to have to be part of the history in Finland. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm I love you. To wear me out, to wear, to wear, to wear. I love you. I'm not going to be there again. There was. You're welcome, Billy. There was. Okay, mom. There was. Okay, mom. Today, the killers of the Alpha people. Yes. yes. Today, yes. the killers of the Afro people are running away from Nigeria. They are relocating to the United Kingdom. Though the one who perpetrated the, the death of over 3 million children today ran to the United Kingdom. They call him Gawan. You know, we raise prayer warriors to make sure that uh, he stay alive till 2nd of December. And with the move to United Kingdom, God is answering that question because he's never going to die there. there. Even if he's dying, they are going to inject him to stay alive till the 2nd of December. That is the Thank essence you. of going there. Because if he stays in Nigeria, once there is a blood pressure, he'll fly without any... So in the United Kingdom, they will inject him and he'll wake up till the 2nd of December. Thank you, Pia. Okay. Um, um, I'll call on, I now call on uh, Honorable Minister of Finance, Mazi Oge, to please give us a brief. Thank you.